Hey everyone, Steve Weinschub with Collider. I am thrilled to be with the cast of Dungeons & Dragons. Uh, I legitimately, like no BS, I am really excited for your movie. I think that trailer looks great. And it looks, the one word I would use is fun. It just looks really fun. How have you actually been describing, what, what do you want to tell fans about the movie in terms of like the tone, what you're excited for them to see? I've always described it as like Princess Bride meets Monty Python meets the, the size and scope of Game of Thrones. Um, it has, uh, without the sex, uh, with lusty, earnest uh, virgin hearts. Um, um, it, it, it has that, I, I mean, it's like my favorite kind of sensibility, that 80s pop sensibility that's fun and, and light and kinetic and um, uh, that has a lot of levity, obviously, but really great heart and great earnestness. And it's not cynical and it's not meta and it's not any of that. It's just good old fashioned fun storytelling. Hugh, if I'm not mistaken, you could be the antagonist in this movie. <laughs> it's complicated, Steve. I've, I seem that way. But I think I'm more complicated than that. I think there are people worse than me in this film. As I recall, I, I can barely remember it. We filmed it a year ago. But uh, I think that's, that's right. But I'm certainly fascinating. Are you guys agreeing with his assessment, or would you say he's more of the antagonist? I'd say it's fairly quite accurate. <laughs> yeah. Incredibly accurate. Yeah. Antago narcissist. Yeah. One of the things that a Dungeons and Dragons movie has is what's called dragons, and we obviously see some of that in the footage. Uh, at the pre at the big thing that Paramount built here, I thought I saw a black dragon, and I think there was another dragon I saw in the footage. So let me ask you: Are there a lot of dragons in the movie, or are we talking like one dragon? I think we can confirm multiple dragons. Yeah. 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 Multiple one. dragons. That sounds That's about right. right. So you guys filmed this, I believe, in Iceland and in Belfast. We're all, am I wrong about no, this? No, they're made You're in right. Iceland plates, but it was all filmed um, in Belfast. Okay, so the ice, okay, so the, I got it. So I, let me ask you this, uh, filming in, in Belfast, uh, what was it like being there? What did it add filming did in that city? Did you see the movie Belfast? Yeah. It was nothing like that. <laughs> And this is what it was like. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you're saying they're great locations. I mean, Northern Ireland is beautiful. I mean, there are some places, and also we went to some spots in England, did we not? Yeah. That were quite extraordinary. You want to talk about that, <laughs> Sophia? <laughs> you're just dying to get on the mic, aren't you? Right, absolutely. Uh, no, Northern Ireland was fantastic. We shot at the the Titanic stages, which. Uh, Interesting history. We may as well have just shot in a sardine can or just put up a canvas tent and shot underneath that. It was the <laughs> loudest excuse for a soundstage I've ever shot in my entire life. Um, they had coal. It was unbelievable. But that, uh, that aside, the, the um, I mean, you can't beat the, the countryside and uh, what it afforded us in terms of um, just the scenery was absolutely out of control. And the Northmen, I think, had just shot there it just wrapped so we ended up using some of their uh some of the stuff that they built and we refurbished it as uh as our own um and then in turn the other interesting thing that i mean i really liked about it is that so much of the as john and uh jonathan will talk about is so much of the effects work was practical so all that stuff that you saw today in the teaser little bit about the dying guys come you know waking up None of it was CG. It was all these practical, awesome so uh, creations that were, you know, coming alive before us as actors on the day, which was great fun. One of the things I love about John and Jonathan's work is that they really find great places to add levity to scenes. They're very, very funny people. Can you sort of talk about working with them and the way they were able to add, like, levity, making jokes, even though it's a Dungeons & Dragons movie? Yeah, I think the important part... Of, I'm just... Yeah, please, anyone <laughs> oh, fucking answer. Please, dude. Anyone can... <laughs> just, I, will, I will happily stop talking. <laughs> you? Well, I tell you, that was a big draw for me. Great. When this thing came my way, I thought, I don't think I do that kind of film. And then I read it, and it was so funny. Brilliantly funny. You, you're absolutely right. These guys seem to be sort of uh, raised on Monty Python or something. And uh, that, was, that was a huge attraction for me. And I... 
I, I haven't seen the film, but I think it survived production. Jokes don't always survive production, <laughs> but I think in this case they have. The, the clip that was played in the hall just now of the, the dead people, people loved it. I, I heard real laughs. <laughs> That was actually Paramount paying the audience five bucks each yeah. to, make, to make you feel good. Dude. No, I'm, jo- I'm joking. Obviously, I'm being an asshole. Yeah. Um, so, but w- one of the things I saw the like the in, in the footage, you can see it, the costumes and the attention to detail. Do you think that like a movie like this is um, maybe e- like a little? It's like right on time after the world sort of knows Game of Thrones and the popularity of like Dungeons and Dragons in the last you know decade or two coming back. A lot of people playing. Like, do you think it's the right time, you know, for this to hit? From what I heard, I forget who gave me this number, but there were like two billion hours of Dungeons and Drag- Dragons watched over multiple platforms, like YouTube players playing Dungeons. It may be apocryphal. Suffice it to say that it, it's way more popular than I ever imagined. And when you get a bunch of people together and you survey, you know, ten people. More, more often than not, the majority will have played or do play Dungeons and Dragons in some sort, and you just haven't heard about it. So, I think um, I, I think it will appeal to obviously players, but again, like any film that has a rabid following, I mean, I know that from Star Trek or whatever, you have to make it appealing to non-fans to invite them into the fold. And at the end of the day, this is just good old-fashioned storytelling. It's not reinventing the wheel in, in, in what we're saying. It's all about family and purpose and identity and uh, the hero journey and all the stuff that uh, stories are all about. Um, but it does it, I think, really well and in a, in, a, in a self-knowing way that doesn't slip into meta or farce or um, too cool for school or cynical. It's just poppy, good entertainment, I think, with a great message. I'm going to ask some individual questions. Can you tell me? I'm all looking right at you. <laughs> so let's She's let, like, don't look right. at me. Can let's talk about, I believe your character is an owl bear, or am I wrong about, did I get that wrong? You're, you're kind of right. Um, my I play a uh, tiefling druid, so I turn into various animals, one of she them being. She ashes. Uh, that is true. E- true. Yeah, I forgot <laughs> about that small tidbit. Um, I don't know how to re- I'm here react to, help. to that. I'm here to help. <laughs> You're it. Thank you. Um, but yes, no, I am a tiefling druid. So um, uh, throughout this story, I turn into various creatures. I wanted to ask you guys, in the footage that I saw, you both look like you're badasses. Um, and I'm just curious, what can you tease about your characters and how much action you actually get to do in the film? I mean, chief badass, I think. He's too, for sure. Uh, he says that, but like honestly... Five pounds of muscle. The whole time, everyone's looking at him like he's Jesus. Like, he's just this hardcore, like, knight in shining armor that just comes in. And, and I mean, I don't think that his character took it too well when yeah. he came along. Yeah. But that's just me personally, just like what Holga got out of it, I don't know. But like, yeah, I think you were pretty bad. We, we did, we did a... We did a fair bit of fighting. We got to live out the whole swinging swords, swinging axes, yeah. slaying dragons, yeah, defeating the bad guys. Like type at all, but she was fascinated for some reason. I don't know. Maybe she saw like his well, prior TV shows or something. <laughs> what was her character stuff? <laughs> to say she's a big fan. <laughs> Just saying. You know? Hugh, how were your action scenes? <laughs> I was asked to turn them down. <laughs> You know, <laughs> too physical, just too much of a presence on screen. Right. I bring a natural menace to, to cinema. I actually have one last thing. Yeah. How much you guys were in Hall H, which is the 7000 seat room. And I saw online people talking about what you guys were saying. How much were you thinking about before you get on that stage? 7000 seats. Yeah, it's like a ton of people. Holy shiza. Yeah. So my question is, before you step on stage for something like that, are you thinking about what am I going to say? Are you thinking about anything? Or are you sort of like, fuck it, let's just go? I was horrified to watch oh. <laughs> Chris and Michelle's entrances. Oh. He's doing boxing and uh, <laughs> God knows what. She comes on, the acrobatics. I thought, I can't do that. No. I'm 61, I'm English, I'm in quite a bad mood. <laughs> that was terrifying. Yeah. But um, I think you did the right thing. I mean, I think you struck the right note. I think, uh, no, for sure, I thought about it 
quite a bit. I think it comes naturally if you've chosen the film for a good reason. I mean, if you ha if you went into it with an intent, um, and thankfully the, I mean, what I said on stage, I really do believe playing the game that I had no interest in at all. I was one of the assholes that thought it was just for dorks. And then I played it with my family and the immediate joy that it created within my family, the immediate bonding within uh, 20 minutes that it created, I was completely taken with it and really moved by the unifying power of this game, which is essentially what acting. I mean, it is, it, it calls to mind everything that we're asked to do as actors. It's like, you're, <laughs> you know, you're whatever you are, you have special powers X, you're with these people. Now make a family and go do something do, go do a story and so it requires all the powers that you have as an actor and um, mm -hmm. and it's completely unified because it's 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 you can't say no it's all yes and yes and yes and okay fine and this thing happens okay how are we gonna get through that so I was really quite blown away by it so um, and really that uh, what I said on stage and uh, I think what makes this particular brand um, so special is that it has that unifying power that especially in a world now that we have that is just nothing but you know disunity and chaos it's nice to be reminded that you know every once in a while playing pretend and using your imagination for something fun and uh, you know is good and is a force for good put that to music there are the bot superpowers right there oh my god what you still are doing that <laughs> On that note, I really want to say thank you guys to come, for coming in. Dungeons & Dragons is going to be in theaters in March of next year. Thank you so much. Cannot wait to see the movie. Thanks, Steve. Appreciate thank it. Thank you. Appreciate it.